begins to a sparkle in your eye and how lovely this evening with you my charmer boom Now at the end, the end of the summer and the beginning of fall, we start to have the heartfelt longing in absence of some of our pestest pals. Our pestest pals, those parasites, or the insects that we love to hate but often have around the siphonoptera, the flea, the diptera, the mosquito, and the one that we know perhaps the best of all, the blatera. And it's more that we have known the Blatera for such a long time, in particular, how to stomp the Blatera out. I would like to suggest, though, perhaps an alternative view of the Blatera, commonly known as the cockroach. That perhaps the blitz pair, if one got to know it a bit better, might find it beautiful. Pliny the Elder, the Greek philosopher, Pliny the Elder, the Greek philosopher, said that if you can't beat a pest, why not eat a pest? He suggested a little confit of cockroach, crushed with sugar, perhaps a bit of honey, is good for the bad back, shoulder, and absence of mind. The Blatera, it is a true insect. How do we know it's a true insect? Three body segments, head, thorax, and abdomen. Long and lovely filamentous antenna, three pairs of legs, two pairs of wings, Circe here on the abdomen, all of which is sensitive to the insecticides in which we try to destroy them. You can't have a good presentation without a special guest. Tonight's special guest is Mr. Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan! Yes, wonderful Mr. Carl Sagan. He is going to demonstrate for us the sound that a cockroach, in particular the Madagascar hissing cockroach, can make. Oops. Classic. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, might sound like this. In February, something like this. And then in March, as maybe you'd predict. One additional a month. As lovely as Mr. Sagan's haircut is, he has, in fact, of course, entirely incorrect. That the Madagascar hissing cockroach, one of our largest blatera and a common pet, 
Kiss is at about 96 decibels by pushing air out of the spiracles on its abdomen. It sounds a lot more like this. So, who are the closest serving relatives of the cockroach? Evolutionarily speaking, once they were thought to be more closely related to the orthopteroids or the crickets and grasshoppers. Perhaps that's because crickets make sound or and military That was odd. And Blutera makes sound. Of course, now... Very strange indeed. Of course, now it is much better known that the Blutera, the most primitive forms of cockroach, have symbiotic bacteria in their guts that help them digest wood. Wood. Much like the esopterans or the termites. And of course, with that little tidbit of information, it's time for another song. Naturally. <laughs> Parasite, 
lays an egg inside the oothica or egg sac of the Volatera. Cockroaches are found worldwide, they're found in forests, they're found in people's houses. Evanias are found worldwide, they're found in houses, and they're found in forests. One evanated egg laid into the oothica of a cockroach, and it will eat as it grows the 30 plus young contained inside. As the pentagram of cockroach destruction continues, it only gets slightly more insidious. With the ampulicid, also commonly known as the jewel wasp, The entire family, Ampulicity, all eat cockroaches, or in fact lay their eggs on cockroaches. One cockroach to one Ampulicid egg, and the Ampulicid larva slowly consumes the stung, paralyzed, but still alive cockroach as if it was a large Vienna sausage. But I would like to suggest, if you look at the portrait of Ava Gabor, and the first life and the first breath of the innocent and newly emerged Latera, just at the point of birth, the young Blatera, almost exact copies as a rook in adulthood, squeeze out to the Othika for the first time, soft-bodied, as the exoskeleton has not yet hardened. Little do they know all of the threats and terrors that perhaps unfold in orbit for wonderful life. How proud would a parent be to see Wonderful, very adaptive house dwellers. <laughs> so I would ask to think again about the Othika, about the cockroach. The Othika itself, the egg sac in which the eggs of the cockroach are inside, is heavily sclerotized. It's impervious to desiccation or dryness, as well as many of the pesticides in which we try to destroy them. Dun dun. <laughs> as it has evolved and moved with mankind from forest dwellings into urban environments? Why is it that a pest that used to only be found in kitchens and bathrooms moved to other areas of the house? Why is it that we have cockroaches now in our bedrooms and in our living rooms? Perhaps it's not the fault of the cockroach. Ask yourself, how are our human habits these days? And of course, I would add again that this is worthy of another song. Oh, I forgot to mention, of course, one thing that I forgot to mention was that if you have an infestation of cockroaches in your house, if you see one, likely there are many, 
In a heavy infestation, of course, there's a certain sickly sweet smell that is produced by the skin oils of the Blatera. Cockroaches do not normally transmit any major diseases to humans. They are in fact quite harmless. In heavy infestations, there can be problems where people are allergic to the proteins on the outside of the Blatera. The pesticides in which we try to destroy them are much more harmful than the cockroach or Blatera itself. Sometimes though, in super heavy infestations, they can eat the eyelashes off of small children or the toenails off of sailors. <laughs> Which, in and of itself, deserves another song. <laughs> Please report to the lobby. 
Attention, attention. Miss Moon, Miss Moon, you're needed in the lobby at once. Um, Irene I'm sorry. Moon, please report to the lobby. Your pet has arrived and is very anxious. I'm sorry, this is most very awkward. Um, but I need to go to the lobby and uh, I'll be right back. said I could come out and sing a song now because I want to let you know that there's other kinds of charts out there there's like scatter plots and um, there's bar graphs and then there's these network charts and graphs now that uh, nobody really understands <laughs> but uh, but you know when all else fails even though we're a little bit under underutilized as a chart and all uh, that you know, a pie chart will not let you down. That's all I have to say. Is like in the end, when you want to know ratio from this to that, the pie chart is is where it's at. So I have a, I have a favorite entomologist, like a lot of people do, and my my favorite entomologist's name is E.O. Wilson. And so I was thinking about well, how cool it would be to be E.O. Wilson, and I wrote a song about that. So here we go. You might know who he is. It's, he's kind of worth looking up if you don't, but you know, if you don't care, that's all right too. But here's a song about him. Thank <laughs> you. 
often a good place to look for that or you're more than welcome to ask Irene after the show and uh, thank you very much and good night <laughs>